Welcome to the correction of trial balance errors, an interesting topic. In this session, we will spend time discussing the role of the trial balance, which errors will be detected by the trial balance and the limitations of the trial balance. We will close off this session by doing a simple example together. Let's get an overview of our time together. We will have a look at these five slides. The trial balance forms an integral part of the accounting cycle. The accounting cycle starts with the following steps. A transaction occurs that is recorded on a source document. The source document is analyzed by entering it in the general journal. The general journal in its turn will be entered in the general ledger account and this is where we have debit and credit entries. Then we will prepare the trial balance. Remember that large amounts of data is captured during the course of business. Therefore, it's not that easy to see at first glance whether the bookkeeper has complied with the double entry principle. The role of the trial balance. The purpose of the trial balance is to test the application of the double entry principle. So what is a trial balance? It is a list of all the accounts in the general ledger of the entity. When should we prepare the trial balance? Well, at any time. Any time that you need, need to check for the double entry, this is where you can prepare the, the trial balance. There are different types of trial balances, and these all depend on when the trial balance is prepared. The type of trial balance that we will prepare during the course of the year is called the pre-adjustment trial balance. This pre-adjustment trial balance happens when we post from the journal to the ledger and we just want to see whether I have complied with the double entry principle. On the other hand, the post-adjustment trial balance will be prepared normally at year end. And this is when we've made all the adjustments to all our figures and all our accounts. But once we are done with the year end, we would like to close off the nominal accounts. Nominal accounts are income and expense accounts. And therefore, we will prepare the post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance helps us prepare our accounting system for the new financial year. When we look at the correction of errors in the trial balance, the question is, what if the trial balance does not balance? Because the trial balance is a list of accounts, the debits and the credits should be equal. If the trial balance does not balance, you firstly have to check that you have transferred all the totals from the relevant account to the correct side of the trial balance. Remember, you have to choose a debit or a credit. Was the correct amount transferred? Did you match the number of accounts to the list of the accounts in the trial balance? It can happen that you've missed an account. Go through the adjustments again. Maybe you have entered a transaction incorrectly. An entry in the subsidiary system, that is, for example, the debtor's account of an individual debtor, will not have an influence on the trial balance. Remember, the trial balance is prepared from the, the source document, the general journal, the general ledger, so the mainstream of our record keeping. The limitations of the trial balance, a number of these exist. Does the trial balance pick up all the accounting errors? Definitely not. It will not pick up if you have left out a transaction in totality. It will also not pick up if you have posted it to the wrong account. So let's, for example, say you, you paid for repairs, but you have by mistake posted it to stationary. It will also not pick up if you've made compensating errors. This means I have made two errors and these errors cancel each other out. Lastly, principal errors are also not detected. In, for example, if you have posted it to an asset account and you should have used an expense account. So in our session, we have covered these four sections already. The example. 
In our example, we see that there is an incorrect trial balance given. Why do I say this is an incorrect trial balance? Well, at first glance, I see that the debit and credit entries are not equal. We see that we have the statement of financial section here at the top, and then we see the nominal account section towards the bottom here. One of these things that we need to look for is whether we had entered the debit and the credit entries on the right side. So if I look at capital, capital normally has a credit entry, but drawings should be on the debit side because it decreases my equity. Equipment is on the debit side, vehicles is an asset on the debit side, but inventory should also be on the debit side. Debit control is correct. We get to bank. Now here, you have to be very careful. Bank is something that we have to look for for additional information because bank can either be a liability or an asset. And therefore, I can't ju judge whether the balance is on the right side or not. Credit is control is a liability and should have a credit entry. Sales is income and that will increase my equity. Therefore, it should be on the credit side. Cost of sales is an expense and decreases my equity. Insurance is an expense and should be on the debit side, and so is credit losses. So I have first evaluated the debit and the credit before we even look at the adjustment. If we look at the additional information, we are going to evaluate the additional information to see whether it will increase or decrease the amount already in the trial balance. So the first point here shows us that bank is in fact a liability and should have a credit balance. Number two, an invoice for 630 rand issued to a debtor was to re recorded incorrectly as 360 in the general journal. This means both the accounts that influenced this transaction were recorded incorrectly. That would be sales and the debtors. The question didn't mention anything about the cost of sales or the inventory. And therefore, I'm just going to calculate the difference between these two amounts, and we are going to enter the 270 Rand so that we can take the 360 to be 630 Rand. Entry number three, or additional information number three says, a payment of 444 repairs was posted to the vehicle's account. So vehicles should decrease with 440, and we should reinstate the expense for repairs. In number four, you have to be very careful. 150 rand received from a debtor whose debt was written off earlier. This would constitute credit losses recovered. But this 150 rand was not recorded correctly. It was entered on the credit side of the credit losses account. Now, Take a moment and just think about the credit losses account. Credit losses is an expense. Therefore, expenses would have debit entries. So if I credit an expense account, I have actually decreased my expense. And we will correct this by adding back the 150 Rand in my credit losses account so that I can sit with the correct amount for credit losses. Number five, no entry was made for goods with a cost of 900 that were taken by the owner for his personal use. If no entry was made, then I have to make the entry in two places. So we are going to say that the owner has taken this for his own use and therefore we will have an effect in drawing and we will also decrease our inventory. Number six, a payment for insurance of 52 rand was entered in the bank account in the general journal, so there was only one entry made, but we must still go and show the effect in my insurance account. Number seven, the total of the debit column for the creditors control analysis column in the general journal was overcast. This means the total was added with too much. What does the debit column do in the creditors control account? 
the debit column will show a minus because creditors would be liabilities. So we have reduced our creditors with 2,000 grand too much. And therefore, I will correct that by just adding the 2,000 back to my creditors control. Number eight, goods with a value of 200 received from the supplier was entered correctly in the appropriate journal, but posted to the wrong side of the inventory account. So if we have received these goods, we have bought them, we should have added it to the inventory account, meaning we should have debited the account. So we are going to have to make two entries here, twice. Firstly, to cancel the wrong entry, and secondly, to repeat that entry so that we can have the correct effect in the inventory account. And this is my suggested solution. You will see that we have posted the account to the correct side. My drawing posted to the debit side, and there's the 900 rand that the, the owner took. No effect in equipment. My vehicles, we've just moved the 440 out, and this is in my repairs account. My inventory decreased because of the drawings that the owner took, and this 400 grand is what we had the correction made because we have entered it on the wrong side. This 270 rand was the incorrect invoice that we have issued, the 630 compared to the 360. Then we have the 150 rand that was also incorrectly entered. We have our creditors control account that was overstated. I had my sales correction coming from my debtors control account. And this is my credit losses recovered. Remember, we've entered this initially in my credit losses account. So this 150 rand is linked to this 150 rand here. And you can see that we have increased our credit losses account because this initial entry of, of 150 Rand here would have decreased this 880. And this is also the insurance that we had that we never recorded. This brings me to the total here. And now we can see the debit entry and the credit entries are the same meaning that we have complied with the double entry principle. I trust that you have gained more confidence in the correction of trial balance errors. Please continue to do more exercises on this topic in order you, for you to master this. We will have a look at these five slides. 